The Dong Ne River in the east of southern Vietnam begins from the south of the Trong Son mountain range. Lam Vien Plateau, 1,936 meters higher than the sea level. It runs through Tan Phu District, Den Quan District, Vinh Q District, Bien Ho City, Long Than District and Hun Than District, Dong Ne Province and then joins the flow of the Saigon River to form the Nhubi River. The confluence flows into the sea via Soa Rap Estuary. The total length of the river is estimated at 610 kilometers. The former name of the Dong Ne River was Phuoc Long, as Dong Ne used to be Phuoc Long District, Tran Bin, Jadin. Its left tributary in the west of Dinh Quan District is the Lunga River. The Dong Ne River has many waterfalls like Lien Kang, Gujurja and Ponghua. It runs through peaceful villages and islets which are now open to tourists. splits into tributaries and bean hole to surround a bell-shaped land. It is Fo Island Heap Ho Commune. Southeast of Bean Ho City, with an area of over 694 ha. Fo Isle is also called Dong Fo, Jiang Fo, Si Yu Chao or Nong Ne Dai Fo. As recorded, Commander Tran Phuong Zhu Ian led a group of refugees to Vietnam in 1679, and was allowed by the Guyan Lord to settle in Dong Pho, today Pho Isle. He joined locals in building a big trading port here. Roads were expanded and markets were constructed to welcome foreign merchants. Local people on Pho Isle practiced many crafts like weaving mats, planting mulberries, raising silkworms, making pottery products, casting brands and so on. However, the battle between Taesun troops and Guyan and S army in 1776 destroyed all the structures of Pho Isle. No traces can be found today. The glorious days of Pho Isle, the most grow trading port in the south, remained in the past only. Since the Liberation Day, the people on Pho Isle have turned it into the biggest rice farming area of Bien Hoa and formed a lot of beliefs. is connected with Bien Ho City via Gang Bridge and Ratch Cat Bridge. When the former was put into operation, the two sides of the Dong Ne River were quite narrow with unspoiled beauty. The steel Gothic style bridge has become a typical feature of Bien Ho land and people. Gan Bridge, 223,3 meters long, was built in 1903 as a large-scale structure in the south at the time. The bridge with the railroad line is an important part of the National Road No. 1. It connects the railway from Saigon to Nha Trang, and facilities a local trade with their partners in Saigon and Binh Ho.
as recorded, Dijiak Pagoda was built in 1412. At first, it was just a small thatched pagoda but later in 1665, it was expanded to serve people greater worshipping demand. Dijiak Pagoda is one of the three most ancient pagodas in Binho that won the title of National Historical Monument. According to the document kept in Binho chapter of the Buddhist Sangha of Vietnam, three monks of the Rienzi School of Buddhism come to Dong Ne from the central region to popularize Buddhism in the 17th century. Then Huk monk and some Buddhists got to the areas by the Dong Ne River, Bleho Commune, Binho City, and built Long Thien Pagoda in 1664. Thang Tri Monk followed immigrants to the Bulong Mountain for rock mining. And later, he built Rufang Pagoda in 1679. Thang Dang Monk and some people sailed to Foil Hipho Commune, Binho and built Daijiak in 1665. Dai Jiak Pagoda covers an area of 3,000 square meters and has two brick gates. It was built in the shape of Chinese character Sam. The structure faces northwest, overlooking the Dong Ne River. There is a huge body tree planted by Monk Ding Tung on the 15th day of the 11th lunar month in 1939 and a statue of the Goddess of Mercy in the front yard. The pagoda has a garden at its back and on the left, and a tower garden on the right. The main hall is actually a three-compartment worshipping house. In the middle compartment, we can see a wooden statue of Amitabha, a statue of Gautama Buddha and a statue of Maitreya. A range of 49 oil lamps and 49 elaborately carved statues of medicine Buddhas is placed next to the door. The left compartment is where Bodhi Dharma is worshipped. And the right one is for Gunyu. The two altars for five Yamas and two judges are placed on the two sides of the compartment. The altar for chief monks who passed away here is behind the main hall. This is where the first chief monks of the pagoda are worshipped like Than Dang 34th generation, Fat Wailin Huk, Jiak Lu Thaya Tru and 35th generation, Tu and Mat Hong 36th generation and so on. As you can see, Dai Jiak pagoda has so many statues of Buddha, horizontal lacquer boards, parallel sentences, reliefs and so on that depict a range of topics. All of them show us the excellent adroitness of sculptors in the past and reveal the traditional fine arts of the east of southern Vietnam. The temple is said to be built in 1700 after Guyan Hukin death. His body was kept here before being buried in Quang Bin his homeland. Locals still keep two lines of verses dedicated to him. Lathan Ha reclaimed the land. His deeds will be remembered for good. The temple was built in the shape of Chinese character Tian. Facing Dong Ne River in the southwest. The main hall has exposed aggregate walls, fish-scale tile roof and red tile floor. Its roof is decorated with a pair of dragons made of blue enameled ceramic, and a pair of kylans. The main entrance of the pagoda has three doors, two of which are engraved with Chinese characters, honoring the deeds of Guyan Hu Can. The inner hall has three rows of big pillars, with a lot of parallel sentences. The horizontal lacquered boards are all engraved with big Chinese characters. 
the color of parallel sentences is intact despite the test of time. Patterns on traditional topics with glitter letters can be found right below the horizontal lacquered boards. The middle compartment of the main hall is where people worship the deity and his subordinates. The attar kept in the glass cabinet next to the altar is believed to belong to Guyan Hu Kan. The front altar where people worship all the deities is decorated with reliefs of the four holy animals. Two rows of Batbu, eight precious items in Buddhism, are placed in the middle compartment. Along the walls are the altars of other deities. Guyan Hyukan Temple is one of the historical monuments in Binhong, where the royal certificates for the deification of honored people are kept. Kept. Leaving the homeland behind. To settle on the isle. Just close your eyes. You will dive in memories. Dongne people also built a stell house to preserve the 300-year history of their land here. They held rituals on the 16th day of the 5th lunar month and the first day of the lunar month to pray for peace and commemorate the deeds of the founder of their homeland. Setting in this land, those people from former Tranbian still remember their roots, culture and tradition of working hard with excellent dexterity. They stay open-minded to learn the quintessence of other cultures and communities in Dong Majidin to create their own identity. Pottery is part of that identity. The first kiln in Tanvan was built in 1878. Later on, people started the craft of making jars for locals of the Kulong River Delta. Dongne and Songbi have become home to natives of different places. Each pottery workshop carries the feature of its owner's homeland. Some are specialized in making bowls, dishes, cups, teapots, etc. Some others make jars of all sizes and some make flower pots only. However, household pottery is the most popular. Pottery products of Tanvan do not follow any traditional criteria for sizes or shapes. Locals use soft and light clay to make nice products that can satisfy any customer. Most pottery makers in Tanvan have worked on clay for their entire life. Their skillful hands turn simple clay into round and durable jars. Each product is made with the potter's soul and sweat. As for the potter, he can smell the clay every day and breathe life into it. It is hard to explain the closely knit relationship between Tanvan people and pottery. And these jars are the fruits of that relationship. Honestly, 
All visitors to a pottery village want to make a product on their own. However, it is difficult for an unskilled person to take part in the process. People place their jars in the shade to dry them gradually. When the jars become hard enough, they will be put into the kiln. Potters can have a lunch break now. They often wash their hands and legs in the Dongne River before going back home for lunch. The village now becomes quiet by the poetic river of Dongne.